You know, in this country, obesity is common, it is serious, and it is costly. And as often as we use the term obesity, it's important to note that being obese is not necessarily the same as being overweight. According to the National Institutes of Health, the difference is simple. Obesity is when a person has too much body fat, whereas being overweight is when a person weighs too much. And there's so many different terms professionals use to categorize those who have weight issues, anything from underweight to morbidly obese. So what makes a person qualify for each? Well, if we're going to get technical, these variations of below normal to above average really depend on your BMI or your body mass index, which is calculated using your height and weight. Now, according to the CDC, anyone with a BMI below 18.5 is considered underweight. A BMI between 18.5 and 24.9 indicates a normal or healthy weight. A BMI between 25 and 29.9 is considered overweight, and a BMI over 30 is considered obese. So you may already be putting yourself into one of the categories we mentioned, but where you actually end up might actually surprise you. In fact, the next time you visit your doctor, they can help you calculate your BMI, or you can go to the, our website, WBOC.com, and click on our picture at the top of the page. You'll find a BMI calculator. Now, when it comes to the number of adults in each category, it's certainly changed over the years. But as of right now, according to the National Institute for Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, 31.2% of people are in the normal weight category, while 33% of us fall into the overweight category. 35.7% of us are considered obese, and only 6.3% are considered extremely obese. Now, being obese can certainly impact your health. Obesity-related conditions include heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes and certain types of cancer, just a few of the leading causes of preventable death. Now it's no secret that America is getting fat and that includes children. According to the Centers for Disease Control, obesity has more than doubled in children and quadrupled in adolescents in the past 30 years. The CDC says childhood obesity has both immediate and long-term effects on health and well-being. Obese youth are more likely to have risk factors for cardiovascular disease such as high cholesterol or high blood pressure. And obese adolescents are more likely to have pre-diabetes. And if you consider that in 2012, more than one third of children and adolescents were overweight or obese, it's easy to conclude that this country has and will continue to have an epidemic on its hand. Reversing this trend is going to take time and education. In the meantime, more overweight teenagers are turning to bariatric surgery. Chemo was like this. Was like that? Yeah. 19-year-old okay. Renee Henry is relearning how to eat. Sessions with her nutritionist are a big part of a weight loss journey she started last year. Her struggle with losing weight started about a decade ago. I've always been like the tallest of my class, the biggest of my class, even in kindergarten and everything. I've always been the bigger girl. But um, I think it just really hit third grade, um, and I just blew up. Renee continued to pack on the pounds into her teen years. I didn't think anything of it. I just like to eat. But as her classmates were starting to date, Renee was staying home. Eating was my boyfriend. Food became my comfort. The extra weight eventually caused other health problems, problems that usually don't show up until well into adulthood. With the weight issues, I also had sleep apnea. I was very close to being diabetic. Um, I had anxiety, depression, um, as well as asthma and heart problems because I have a heart murmur. As, and so then my heart was enlarged and I had fluid around my heart. It was her senior year in high school when Renee decided something needed to change. I just felt it was time. There was a lot of things going on in my life and I was like, I need to take control of something. That's when Renee met Dr. Kirk Reichard, a surgeon with Nemours AI DuPont Hospital for Children. You know, you could tell that she had withdrawn and that she was being bullied in school and that, um, you know, she was desperate at the point that she came here for something to change the trajectory of her life. But that change was going to take time. You have to lose weight, like you have to show that you're ready for it. They have to track you for like six months or something like that. Like it is a long, long process. A process that starts not with the body, but the mind. They make multiple visits here, you know, sometimes as often as every two to three weeks over several months to really go through every every facet of their life to, to make sure we understand not only their medical issues but their psychological issues and all the family barriers that there are 
uh, and we don't move them on until we're convinced as a team that they're ready. Renee was 335 pounds before she had the surgery. Since the surgery last fall, she's lost nearly 100 pounds. How has your life changed? Oh, it's a lot better. <laughs> like, emotionally, I'm just like, I cannot stop checking myself out in the mirror. Like, it is just the complete opposite of how I was. I'm just like, hmm. Probably one of the most rewarding things I do. Um, we, have, we have clinic on Fridays where we see both, with both the kids before surgery and then the kids after surgery. And compared to a lot of the other procedures that I do, just the changes, the lifestyle changes and the, and the, the personality changes like we saw in Renee are just extremely rewarding. Renee's weight loss is typical of someone following the surgery, but for her, this journey is far from over. There's still a lot of things that I need to work on more emotionally and physically. I, I feel like I, I want to lose more weight. My goal weight is like 180, so I'm, I'm, I'm not very close, but like I'm closer than I was before. You have to work out and eat right continuously for the rest of your life because my uncle, he had it. He had the surgery, but he gained all the weight back, plus more. Along with the weight, Renee is shedding all of the health problems and replacing them with a new energy and confidence. I just want to go out all the time. I want to meet new people. I want to travel more. Like, I just want to go all over. And physically, like, it's, I can finally go into a store and shop. Now, in order to be considered for bariatric surgery at AI DuPont, a child has to be referred by a pediatrician. They have to be 14 or have already gone through sexual maturity. The child must be above the 99th percentile for body mass index, or BMI. Doctors also look at family functioning and individual psychological issues. And the hospital holds a weight loss information night every second Monday of the month. If you would like to learn more about the weight loss program at Nemours AI DuPont Hospital for Children, go to our website, WBOC.com, click on our picture at the top of the page. Well, it's no secret a big part of a healthy lifestyle is what you eat. And for decades, we've always heard to be very careful with starches. Not anymore. Up next on Delmarva Life, we get the skinny on starches, including how some of them may actually help you with weight loss. We also hear that fast food is a no-no if you're trying to fight the fat. We're debunking that thought, too. Find out how to make smart decisions at the drive-thru. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.